Mr. Speaker, members, it is a great sense of concern for this House that I rise in opposition to this rushed motion to impeach a statewide officer elected by the people of Texas. Like most members of the House and like virtually all of the 30 million people in Texas, I began this week with no idea that the House was considering impeaching the Attorney General. Now, here at the end of the week, we are preparing to remove him from office before the day is out. There is no need to rush to judgment. Impeachment in Texas isn't just rare, it's virtually unique. Only twice in the history of our state have we impeached an elected official the most recent being half a century ago. Despite the colorful history of public officials in Texas, only twice has this House determined that their conduct rose to the level where they should be removed from office. And only twice more did the House conduct proceedings that ended without impeaching the official. The process we are conducting today is unprecedented in the history of Texas. Every other impeachment ever conducted by this House included several public hearings in committee with dozens of witnesses. By the time we take the exceedingly rare step of moving to impeach a public official, the entire state should be talking about it and should be outraged. Process isn't just an esoteric concept that lawyers insist on. It's how we guarantee all of us have rights. In an impeachment, the conclusion isn't the only thing that matters. If we are going to remove a statewide elected official elected by the people, those people have a right to be included in the process every step of the way so they can draw the conclusion along with us. We all know that in any argument, people accept the conclusion, the end result better when you lay out the facts of the case and let them reach the conclusion rather than just telling them this is how it is. Historically, as you have heard, our impeachment proceedings have been even handed, including the right of the respondent to question witnesses. The two successful impeachments of Governor James Ferguson in 1917 and Judge O.P. Carrillo in 1975 were conducted with open public hearings and cross-examination of witnesses by both sides. And when Judge Carrillo was not given subpoena power, most of the witnesses he requested were in fact subpoenaed. The Carrillo impeachment hearings were held over two months in May through July of 1975, including 21 meetings where the committee heard from 32 witnesses. In 1929, the House considered a resolution to impeach Land Commissioner James Robeson. Our process this week is so rushed that I didn't have time to fully research the history of those proceedings, but the hearings in the Robeson matter were apparently held before the entire House, sitting as a committee of the whole, with counsel for both sides addressing the House and over three dozen witnesses testifying where you could see them directly if you were a member of the House. The, that proceeding ended with the House deciding not to impeach. Similarly, the impeachment proceedings of Governor Ferguson were conducted by the entire House as a committee of the whole. The governor was allowed to attend the hearings and be represented by counsel who was allowed to participate. The House heard from 39 witnesses, including the governor. In the Carrillo matter, the members of the House knew about the investigation for months before it came to the floor. The investigation began in May. The committee report was July, signed on July 17th, and the House considered the matter on August 4th, not two days after hearing that impeachment was a possibility. In the Ferguson case, the first resolution of investigation was introduced on February 14th. Hearings began on March 7th, the House finally voted on articles of impeachment on August 24th. The investigation on Land Commissioner Robeson began in public in January. The House took up the impeachment on June 10th. Contrast those proceedings with those in which we are currently engaged. 
This current process was done in secret, so much so that most members of the House didn't even know the impeachment of the Attorney General was being considered until at most a couple of days before the articles of impeachment were filed this week. There was no public testimony, no chance for the public or even members of the House to learn about the allegation and look the witnesses in the eye. There's a reason why we have the concept of hearsay. Testimony given outside of court where you can't see what the witness is saying, you can't judge his demeanor, is considered less credible than when you can look the witness right in the eye. Not just the entire House, but the public should be aware of the investigation and of the possibility that it might result in impeachment. There is no cause to sneak up on the public with the removal of a statewide elected official. It reflects poorly on the House when we suddenly spring an impeachment on the public that they knew nothing about, much less had the ability to draw their own conclusions on seeing the evidence play out in public hearings. Instead, all we have is the transcript of a meeting, I can't even call it a hearing since no witnesses were heard, in which the committee staff briefed the committee on what the staff had discovered in their investigation. In no court anywhere would that be considered evidence. Not a single witness testified to the committee and no report was issued. We are simply being handed a transcript of the staff's conversation with the committee and being asked to vote to remove a statewide office holder who was elected by the people. Now, I want to make it very clear, as Mr. Smithy did earlier, that I am not blaming the committee for this process. The committee is made up of five members, five of our most able and honest members. I've dealt with most of them on legislative matters in the past and can state without reservation that I trust the word of the members that I've dealt with. My concern is with us as a House. I am gravely concerned that we let the matter of former Representative Brian Slayton serve as a precedent and leave us with the impression that the committee goes off and writes a report and we all just read a copy and ratify it, removing someone from office to which the public has entrusted them. In the Slayton case, there was very good reason for the hearings being conducted in secret. There was a young woman involved whose very personal business was at the center of that investigation. Moreover, she was an intern in the House entrusted to our care. That investigation was handled very delicately and very sensitively, as it should have been. This case is in no way analogous to the Slayton matter. There is nothing I'm aware of in this investigation that should not have been made public all along the way so members of this House and the people of Texas could see the evidence as it was adduced and draw their conclusions along with the committee. By the time this matter reached the House floor, all the details should have been very well known to every Texan who cared to know. There is no need to rush headlong into impeachment. There is nothing about the end of session on Monday that in any way impacts the House's ability to continue with impeachment proceedings. That was definitively stated by the Supreme Court in Ferguson versus Maddox. Gentlemen's time has expired.